Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builders Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the National Guard products number 220N DKB. This is a dark bronze anodized aluminum automatic door bottom with a neoprene insert. This is what an automatic door bottom looks like. This happens to be a 42 inch piece, just for purposes of this video. It's just happens to be 42. It's available in every common size, really. Uh, we can probably make them as small as 18 inch uh, or 24 inch, something in that range. If you have something really small, let us know. We'll confirm uh, compatibility. But all the way out to four foot for sure, likely even something as close to five foot. But of course, your typical sizes are going to be your three foot, four, you know, three foot six, you know, two foot eight doors in that size. Now, what is an automatic door bottom? And it is something actually that I will say is uh, an elegant solution to sealing the bottom of the door. I'll probably mention it several times actually. But what is an automatic door bottom? It's a device by which the bottom of the door is sealed when the door is brought to a closed position. Uh, when the door is in the open position, the drop bar is retracted back up into its housing, allowing it to clear over something that might be in, you know, behind the door allowing you to uh, seal the door really just in the last 10 degree of closing or, or thereabout, uh, but not have the seal itself make contact with the floor behind the door, a rug that might be behind the door, an errant shoe that might be behind the door, things of that nature. And uh, in that regard, make it quite elegant. So let's, let's talk about what this is. The, there are three different types of automatic door bottoms. There are surface mounted like this, there are mortise, and then there are semi mortise. The surface mount is obvious. It mounts right to the face of the door. The mortise or the semi recessed or semi mortise are those that are mortised up into the door or mortised flush to the face of the door. We'll focus only on the uh, surface mount models such as this. This is a model that will mount on the push side of the door, on the push side, and on the surface of the door. The reason it has to be mounted on the push side of the door is because, and it can't be mounted on the inside of a residential door that swings in, it's because this drop bar, this uh, plunger so to speak, needs to make contact with the, with the frame and in this instance with the stop. So what happens is when this item is attached to the face of the door, the drop bar will make contact with the stop when the door is closing. It will be forced in, forcing the bottom to drop. Okay, so let's talk about this item. Let's first, it's surface mounted, and like I said, it has to be mounted on the push side of the door. When you mount this on what is the push side, meaning the keyed or locked side or exterior side, you will mount it on the face of the door, right on the surface, and you're going to mount it between the stops of the frame. You'll take the dimension between the stops, deduct an eighth of an inch, and that will be the net size item that you want. By all means, order a the next longest piece and indicate in the comment field what net length you'd like for us to cut the material to and ship it to you that way. It will save you the trouble of cutting this down. But when you've got it cut to the proper size and it's mounted on the face of the door at the proper height, when the door is closed, you'll take note that this end of the door bottom has this bolt or this plunger sticking out of it. Okay. Whereas at the other end, there's nothing. The bolt side is always the hinge side of the door. The other end is always the lock side. When this is mounted to the face of the door and the door is open, the plunger being spring loaded is pushed out. It's fully extended. When that door closes, the plunger comes in contact with the face of the stop. As you continue to push the door closed, what happens is the plunger is depressed, forcing the bottom to drop. Okay? That's how an automatic door bottom works. Now, behind the, from the back side, how they operate is when the bar is pushed in, it will compress a spring that's in there. Okay? It's going to look like that. Now, it's normal that it will. Uh, drop unevenly. That's typical sort of behavior. But the actual reason for that 
or what actually happens is if my thumb were to represent the sill when it makes contact, it will even out on the other side, regardless of what the actual degree of level the sill is. So the drop bar, the plunger gets pushed in, the drop bar drops on one end, and then will continue to knife down in that sort of uh, guillotine kind of concept, allowing it to contour itself to a sill that's not, that's not level. Now, if you have a situation within reason, it, I, I don't know what, how far out of level it has to be before it will no longer work very well, but the truth of the matter is um, <laughs> you know, you'd have an outrageously uh, unlevel sill w w when an automatic door bottom didn't work. So that's how these operate. Uh, very simple, you can see that mechanism back behind here. Okay, you've got the plunger, which is attached to that rod. There is this, that drop mechanism that's here, and that's connected to a spring that goes back over here and is secured right here at the tip of my finger. There's a spring assembly. And it's because of that spring assembly that you, you ought to order the exact size you want. If a unit is uh, greater than three foot, you can feel trim it up to four inch because where the spring comes into effect, you're really working with this sort of area in here that you can trim. If the unit is less than 36 inch, they say that no field trim is permissible because the assembly of where the spring is going to fall in will be so close to the end that it's not permissible to cut it down. I say order it the size that you need, don't, don't cut it in the field. So that's the short version of how this works and elegant because as the doors opened, the spring forces the drop bar back up into the housing, allowing you to clear the rug, the shoe, whatever is on the inside. The disparate floor surface is another great reason. You could have, you could have added three quarter inch uh, hardwood flooring on the inside of the home and the door just skims over the top of that. There's really nowhere to install a door sweep in that uh, sort of scenario because now the sill and the floor are at kind of different levels and you've got to seal the bottom of the door. So the door sits here, your threshold, and then your hardwood flooring butts up to the threshold and it, and it makes a nice clean butt end to the face of the threshold but now your door needs something to seal. An automatic door bottom mounted out here is perfect because when you install it and you open the door, the housing gets retracted back up and slides right over the top of the floor. That, that's a great solution for using it. Also, these items are known to be incredibly long lasting because the seal material, which in this case is neoprene, all you're doing is pushing. You're not dragging across the floor, wearing it out prematurely. So there's a, an advantage to the fact that these items are known to be quite long lasting. Now there's a, there is below this video a, uh, if what you wanted to know was how they kind of work, the video probably stops here for you. The balance of the video will be a step-by-step -step review of, of the item based on the information available. Below this video is the uh, information in the extended description, automatic door bottom with a neoprene insert. First of all, this 220 uh, NA from, uh, uh, National Guard is going to be, a, be available uh, with other inserts as you kind of change the door bottom a little bit, but sponge neoprene such as this material is very common. Okay, Very durable material. You can also order these items with a silicone insert. You can also order them with a vinyl insert. Well, silicone, forgive me, uh, vi not vinyl. You can order it with a bristle insert. Why you would want neoprene like this, all instances really, it's a very durable sort of seal. You would want to use it uh, on a relatively regular uh, topped uh, threshold condition. If you had carpeting for some reason that this was going to seal against, this is a bad idea um, because it will not you know, contour itself very well uh, to an irregular floor surface. Uh, neoprene I like in those instances where I I like it almost in all instances. If I was going to be installing the material 
over a carpet, I would use a brush or a very irregular floor surface. I would use nylon brush. I would change the model. And by the way, there's a link below this video to a document called Product Brochure that will show this item and its immediate sister products. You'll see a reference to brush that's there. You'll see a reference to uh, how the part number changes when you go to nylon brush, when you go to silicone. Nyl uh, neoprene I would use in all instances. Uh, silicone I might opt to use if I was doing a, I would certainly opt to use if I was doing an acoustically rated uh, situation where let's say you had an amateur sound studio in your home and you wanted to seal it off using material that was rated for sound transmission control at least beyond what the standard material is without getting into the expense of true sound rated control hardware to gasket a door, silicone would be your option because that's been tested for that in the 220 model. That irregular floor surface you're going to go with a nylon brush. Neoprene is great because it's just durable, it seals very well, it's a thick sort of material that is going to give you years of predictable, reliable uh, sort of performance. Now, you will notice from that, uh, from that link to the product brochure, if you've got that up, uh, talks about specifying the net length, which we've already covered the minimum length and there's the answer. They can make them as small as 11 inch or as great as 60 inch, so that's good to know. End caps available that they say for the 220 and other models. End caps are included automatically. They, they are all, I'll show you what those are later in the video. They're going to already come with it uh, because you've got an open end here and they supply a piece of trim that will clean that look off that you'll apply to the face of the door. You'll take note that the shape of this is not symmetrical. You're going to have the plunger in one end, you're going to have this angled face. That feature is what makes this a handed unit. You have to order it for the hand of the door that, you're, that, that you have. There's a link below this video to a document called Handing Chart that will show you the two hands of what you're going to realistically use. The door can swing one of four ways, technically. Uh, you've got a, a left hand or a right hand. Those two definitions mean that the door swings in. You're going to mount it on the push side from the side that the key is on. You could also have doors that swing out. In a, door, in a situation where the door swings out, you'll mount this on the push side again, which in this case happens to be the interior. You just have to specify that because that bolt uh, can't be... Well, you can reverse the material. They're, they're, uh, the potential for field reversing this is, uh, ec is, is certainly excellent. My opinion is, you, and this video is not going to go into reversing these, you don't want to have to reverse it in the field. Just order it the proper uh, hand of door. And by all means, if you're unsure what that means in terms of hand of door, contact us before ordering it. So on that link to the product brochure, you're going to see other shapes that are not really uh, asymmetrical at all. You'll see others that are. If it's a rectangular unit, it's the handing. You can kind of take that and flip it over, even though you will notice that uh, in not all instances, you have a finished face on both sides. So the, the, the moral of the story is order the size that you need. That's, that's where this is all going to. Now, moving on in the extended description, you're going to notice that this is uh, made of aluminum with a dark anodized finish. So that's where the DKB comes in. 220 is representative of the profile and type of uh, unit that this is. The N means that the insert is neoprene versus silicone versus the WH for bristle. Sometimes you can, uh, sometimes there's other inserts available based on a specialty application, but that's what we're talking about with this. Then you have your DKB, your dark bronze anodized finish. If you didn't, uh, if you wanted a different finish, like a clear anodized aluminum, it would be an NA, NA type finish. Okay. Now, smoke and draft control, ULB, UL, UL10B, UL10C, fire rated for up to three hours. Air infiltration tested, app, certainly, uh, and to be used with a threshold for the maximum seal. You're going to want this to seal down onto something that's going to be, um, you know, ready to receive a, the drop bar to make contact with. Okay, there is a there is an image below this video showing the important dimensional properties of the item, and let's go over that now. Two and a quarter is the overall height of the unit with the uh, of of the uh, 
with the seal, the image that they're showing you there shows it partially extended. Okay, so you're going to be two and a quarter inch overall height when it's not extended. 1930 seconds, so basically five eighths of an inch or nine sixteenths. Uh, thickness, one inch drop, and that's important to know. That 220N is a bit uh, special in the fact that it goes beyond three quarter inch in terms of a uh, drop one inch is not uncommon because of that, that exact scenario where you've got a huge gap below the door to the threshold and it's because you've added a subfloor. So a one inch drop is very common uh, requirement uh, in the field from clients. The 220NA will allow you to do that. There is a link below this video uh, to the third one is the installation instructions and let's go over that now. Uh, so the first thing to do is to order it the proper size. When you're standing on the exterior or on the push side of the door, not necessarily exterior, on the push side of the door, you're going to measure the distance between the stops because that's what the drop bar, the plunger will make contact with. Deduct an eighth of an inch. You need to have a sixteenth of an inch clearance on either side uh, for just the fact that the thickness of the material needs to clear the stop as the door is opening. So an eighth of an inch. When the unit comes, the neoprene will be slightly long, and that's by design. You will trim that. You're going to want that to make contact and to fill that small, you know, sixteenth of an inch area. You'll trim that. It's normal for it to hang a little bit long. Okay. So, step one in the installation instructions: if a brush gasket, slide the brush clear when cutting case and drop bar. So what they're automatically telling you is some information in case you have to cut this down. Let's just cover that quickly. Uh, what they're saying is if it's a nylon version, you, everything here that you're going to cut is aluminum based on this unit, or it's not steel. But in a bristle type, the bristles are nylon, but the holder that pinches the bristles together, that's steel. So you're going to want to slide that back and trim that with like side cutters or aviation cutters uh, is what you're going to want to uh, do. You're not going to want to run that through your, chop, your uh, miter box saw. If you're going to cut it down, you will always cut down the end, that's the lock side, the end without the plunger. Just think what you would do if you cut this side. You would destroy that bar that's there. So you would never cut the hinge side down. Never cut this side down. Only this side. The, the screw package, which we're going to go over in a moment, is going to come with two nails. Two small nails. You're going to insert those two small nails. You'll see a hole here and a hole here. You're going to push that bar down, and you're going to drop. You're going to push the nails through, so that they will hold the drop bar extended and even. Then you will carefully cut that side with the drop bar extended. And the reason is this: when that drop bar drops, it doesn't drop straight down. It kind of does this, if I'm exaggerating. So you're going to want to drop the unit before you cut it to its length because it's in the extended position that you need to emulate. You'll lose a little bit of movement and you'll have too much of it here because that drop bar kind of moves on an angle. For uh, Step two, for single doors, cut it an eighth of an inch shorter than the distance between the stops. For pairs of doors, you're going to make that a sixteenth of an inch. Do not cut until the drop bar is extended in the down position. Insert the two nails shown in the small holes on the side of the drop bar to keep the bar extended while cutting. Again, maximum length to cut is 4 inch. If you've got a unit 36 inch or longer, shorter than that, order it from the factory the net size. Uh, let's skip right to uh, step 3 and 4. We've covered step 5. With the door closed, position on the push side of the door with the adjusting rod towards the hinge edge. Align the bottom of the case flush with the bottom of the door and the sixteenth of an inch clearance at either end. You can tailor that height a little bit should you need to. I don't see any reason why you can't. If you had to cheat the physical location of this ever so slightly to account for, you know, maybe an inch and an eighth uh, required drop, you know, or space, you could probably do that. But keep in mind as you drop the drop bar down, it'll be hanging below the door potentially making contact with the something uh, you know on the inside of the door. So keep all that in mind. Uh, so 
Okay, step six, drill the pilot holes for the screws that are included. And you're gonna notice these large, ugly bushings that are here. Well, don't worry, when the installation is done, you won't see those because of the finished screws. And that's how you pierce through to hold the unit onto the door. There's four of these screws that are included for your use in attaching that to the door. So you're gonna drill those pilot holes first before the screws go in. Uh, 9 64ths of an inch is the recommended size for those included screws. Step seven, install with the screws provided. Tighten center mounting screw snug first, you know, somewhere towards the center. And then tighten the remaining mounting screws. Don't over tighten anything because the unit will not glide smoothly when you operate the door. What you're gonna do, so they've jumped right into you attaching it to the door. Before you do that, take the plunging, the, the uh, drop rod and turn it clockwise. This is threaded. And I'm kind of give, giving away the punchline of the joke, I suppose. But thread that in so that it goes, so that it's barely sticking out. If you'll recall, it was sticking out far more than it was before. The amount of projection of the drop bar, and it's threaded clockwise to draw it in, counterclockwise to bring it out, is directly related to the amount of drop that you can achieve. If you need just a small amount of drop, you will have to push this or thread this in so that it doesn't move very much. So the way that I have it now, it's not gonna hardly drop at all because I have it threaded in so far. Before you attach it to the door, thread that in. Tuck it out of the way. And I've, rota I've turned it counterclockwise to bring it out. Now, because I've got more projection, I will get more drop is what I'm trying to say. Draw that in, apply it to the door immediately test the door to make sure that it doesn't hit anything unintended. Okay, Don't over tighten the screws because this, as you can guess, that needs to slide smoothly. Okay, so step eight. Set the adjusting rod for proper seal. To reduce the rod, turn it to the right. To increase the drop, turn it towards the left. Well, clockwise first, counterclockwise second. Once hinge edge, uh, edge, pardon me, once hinge end of drop bar makes solid contact, the other end will drop. We demonstrated that first in early on. My thumb restricted it, so it dropped down like this. Step eight. The amount of drop needs to be so that it makes contact, and that's it. It will, does not help you to turn it a little more clockwise. It, it, that actually works against you. Make contact, you you know, like what I like to do is take a piece of paper and if it just doesn't go underneath there, your job is done. What happens is if you have too much pressure, there's too much compression, there's too much of this forced down, it will require a greater amount of degree of opening of the door to open to get the plunger out of the way of the stop before the drop bar begins to be retracted up. Imagine if you had so much pressure that you need to get it open an unusually uh, greater amount than standard. You are in effect taking that drop bar and you're dragging it across the floor because it's not tucked back up in the housing. Contact only, that's all, that's it. Uh, step nine, if you are using, and we happen to be going through the uh, screw package as we go along, if you have a wood frame, you're gonna apply this little strike with this little screw on the wood frame where the, bar, where the uh, bar or the plunger makes contact, over time that'll create a divot in the frame uh, because it'll be making contact with wood. You're gonna wanna put that piece of metal right exactly where that goes to prevent that. Uh, the balance of the installation instructions talk about rehanding. This video is not gonna go into that. Avoid doing that at all costs. If you find yourself in a position where that needs to happen, I fully suggest that you, if you're unsure about your ability to get it rehanded, simply don't do it. We can contact the factory, you can ship it to them, we can ask them to rehand it for you. Um, there will, you know, you can probably even include a return shipping label or there might be a charge to ship it back. But I've, I have people that, oh, I rehanded it and now it doesn't work correctly. It happens all the time. You know, in this day and age, let's avoid you getting the wrong product. Let's work together to make sure that you don't uh, get the wrong product. So uh, all of those reasons, uh, in my mind, make an automatic door bottom, especially this one from National Guard, an elegant solution to sealing the bottom of the door. 
I like it because the door bottom is installed on the exterior of the door, most inst installations where the door swings in. That brings your barrier, your first line of defense, on the exterior face of the door. And as a matter of fact, you know, like a quarter inch further out from the face of the door. So you're stopping the infiltration point right there. Elegant. Most homes, like mine, probably like yours, has a rug behind the door. This doesn't get trapped up on that. You'll have fin type door bottoms that are stapled to the bottom of a door. That's just going to get ruined over moving over a, uh, uh, over uh, not only a rug, but let's say someone leaves a, a shoe there. You get the door open and you feel some resistance and you just continue to push, not realizing you're destroying the bottom of your door bottom. You're tearing pieces of it off. Automatic door bottom uh, avoids that sort of uh, problem. They're incredibly effective. They're uh, air infiltration tested. Some of them are acoustically rated. And you'll notice if you dig into STC control, sound transmission control, you're going to be dealing with automatic door bottoms, in my mind, proving that the entire design inherently is an effective barrier to keeping out uh, not only sound, but of course the elements. Uh, the only downside, and I mention it because now in 25 years it's been mentioned once, is this. So the unit makes sound, and I'm holding that near the microphone, the unit makes sound. You will hear when you open the door, you will hear that, and depending on how fast you open the door, you will hear that clanking of the drop bar coming back up into its housing. You, you're going to hear that. If you listen for it, you're going to hear it. Now, if I've sold, you know, in all of the years that I've sold these, one person has said, that's unacceptable. I can't have that. And I didn't really have a good response because it's a legitimate thing to say. It does make sound. Um, the answer that I have for that is that you either live with the fact that it makes sound and take solace in the fact that you're picking up all these other advantages or you simply navigate away from those models that would be prone to being uh, noisier so to speak and you're able to look at models that feature maybe an interior liner of some sort of rubberized material that will deaden the clanking sound as the drop bar comes back up into the housing and what we're going to do is look at the National Guard products catalog for models that will uh, assist in that sound deadening that will happen. And you're going to see if you were to open up the extended, uh, if you're going to open up the link below this video to the manufacturer's page um, and pull up the full product catalog. And then navigate to the section where they have automatic door bottoms, you'll see a few models that feature a pile that is inserted in the wall of the drop bar and makes contact with the inside face of its housing. Not necessarily one that's going to help deaden that clanking, but it will, in my experience, makes it a, a bit uh, less obvious that there is an actual sound that's associated with that. Although it's really not unlike the sound of a door closer. When you open the door, sometimes you're, you're, you will hear a uh, a clicking sound uh, when the door opens. Um, you know, it's along those lines, and it's quite frankly nothing that, in that the overwhelming majority of people um, even notice. So, in my opinion, be aware of the fact that that's part of the design. Be aware of the fact that truly people really never notice it. Although you might notice it, but know it up front that it, there will be a small amount of sound of that unit coming back up into its housing. Now, the last parts of the unit that we've talked uh, that I haven't shown you are the end caps. These are L angles, basically. They will attach to the face of the door. They will allow you to trim off. So, looking at it from the proper perspective, they will allow you to trim off the end of the look so that it'll look like that. They get mounted right to the face of the door. There's one that has the uh, hole for the plunger. There's the other side that does not. You can see how they're sloped. There's only one way that they can go on so that they fit correctly. You're going to get screws, obviously a total of four for attaching them to the face of the door. You'll have to trim that just so that it fits inside of there, but keep in mind you will have that small amount of angle drop, so test it before you uh, 
you might have to remove the cap a little bit and, and find the exact uh, perfect uh, trim length for your application. And that completes this automatic door bottom. Now the name National Guard is synonymous with all things weather stripping related. There is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all the National Guard products that we sell, a link to the manufacturer's ever evolving, ever improving website, but a link to the full line catalog that we had referred to earlier. If you have more than an occasional need for weather stripping, by all means familiarize yourself with the National Guard product catalog because their name is so synonymous with automatic door bottoms, uh, thresholds, door sweeps, perimeter gasketing, material made of aluminum, stainless steel, architectural bronze, uh, a comprehensive uh, op product offering of that material, industry leading ship times. The summary of National Guard is this, if they, the summary is this, they have a minimum order as almost every manufacturer does and in my opinion ought to. They have a minimum order. If you are, if your order is over that so that they can drop ship and we don't keep it in stock to begin with, you will experience industry leading short of ship times. They're fantastic. They can get stuff out very, very quick in terms of the fact that they have to pull it, punch it, prep it, ship it, bag it, things of that nature. They're fantastic, National Guard. And their technical support is always superb. Any questions on the National Guard products number 220N DKB? dark bronze anodized surface mounted neoprene insert door bottom or any other National Guard product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.